Okay, so let's talk a little bit about supplies. That's up next. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you here today. It is February 5th, 2020. So it's getting here in the evening. It's been a really cold week so far, but it's gonna warm up starting, well, it's really started today, but in through tomorrow. And what we have going on tomorrow is the beginning of the installation for our irrigation here on the farm. So what I wanted to do, in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and do it now. I'm gonna link our irrigation series here. So if you're getting this episode and not sure what's going on, check out the first two on this series where we discuss how we're going to go about installing irrigation here on the new farm. So what you see here is a portion of the irrigation lines that we're going to be putting in the ground starting tomorrow. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go over different size pipes, what we have and essentially where they're going to be, how we got our supplies, where we got the supplies and all that kind of great stuff. So first things first, let's talk about the pipes that we're using and where they're going. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start here back on the back patio. So forgive the mess in the back. We had to kind of get discombobulated in order to have all of this pipe delivered yesterday. So what you're seeing here is essentially what's gonna comprise the main line on the farm. So one of the things I talked about in that first video is our line coming in to the house and to the farm is a one and a half inch line. So our main line, so the main line going to the valves and across the farm is gonna be one and a half inch. So it's gonna match that same size and that's what we have here so we have some one and a half inch line which will comprise the main line we will have extensions off of the main line and we're going to keep that at one and a quarter inch so less expensive still plenty of flow so you know as far as the flow we're looking at about 13 gallons or so per minute that's coming out from the other side of the vacuum breaker so we lose a little bit of pressure as well as water flow when it goes through the vacuum breaker and through the filter. Once it gets to the other side, we're looking at about 13 gallons per minute. So what we need to do is we've designed our zone so that we're utilizing no more than about 12 gallons a minute. So we have a little bit of a buffer there. Now the one and a half inch line and then going down to the one and a quarter inch line is gonna give us plenty of flow. We did all the calculations there. So we won't have an issue with getting 13 gallons a minute to every point of the farm as long as we continue that one and a quarter inch line at minimum as we have long stretches. As you have long stretches of pipe, that friction slows down that water flow and potentially slows down the gallons per minute once you get out to the actual emitter. So the one and a half as our main and the one and, one and a quarter as our extensions off of the main will allow us to maintain that gallons per minute. And obviously that's critical for our trees so we know how much actual water we're putting on our trees and we can control that. So you see, we got a lot of it here. <laughs> this just got delivered yesterday. We got it from a local supplier here. Uh, it was Ewing, uh, if you guys are familiar with them. Uh, but we got a whole lot of it sitting here on the back patio. Um, it's just to make sure that we didn't have anybody looking at it today, thinking that they might snag a few. <laughs> Anyways, this is ready to go. Now, this is not it. So this is our main line and the extensions from the main line. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the pipe that we had to bring in for this project. Okay, so here we are in the garage and we don't have our outbuilding yet so we got a whole lot crammed into this space so forgive the mess but you're gonna see three different types of pipe that we have here now the first two would be a one inch pipe and a three-quarter inch pipe so these two pipes are gonna be what we utilize for shorter runs off of the valves we got a couple areas our berries um, our grapevines and our garden beds that'll be a much shorter run from the valve to where they're actually gonna be watering so we're using one inch lines there and then the three-quarter inch line that will actually be the extensions off the main line going to the individual trees. So those will only be about five feet uh, off of that one and a quarter inch main line uh, going from one tree to the next. So you'll see that there. So we have these two that we got from Home Depot and then you also see some gray. So this is going to be electrical conduit that we're putting down into the ground in preparations for electricity on a couple different areas of the farm. The first one would eventually be our livestock area. We do want to have uh, electricity out there that that we can utilize uh, if we need to do anything with livestock. We will have some livestock pins and corrals, so we wanna make sure we have electrical there. And also we wanna have electrical running to the area immediately behind the house, which is where we're gonna be having our grapevines, our garden beds, and probably a few things that we're gonna put into place for entertaining. So we're gonna run an electrical conduit out there so we can eventually pull lines there. So you see these three here. 
Now, of course, in addition to the pipe, we've got about 5,000 feet or so of pipe. That's linear feet of pipe. I don't have the exact calculation on that, but it's right at about 5,000 or so. So, of course, in addition to all the pipe, we, of course, need to be able to connect them together. So let's go and take a look at a few of those things. But next up would be all of our fittings. So you'll see them here. We ordered the vast majority of the fittings online. Usually I would get those from Home Depot and just take my time there and try to find everything. But with the odd sizes, like the one and a quarter inch main line that we're using, it was gonna be a lot more difficult to find specific things that we needed to run off of that main line. And we actually had our irrigation guy suggest going to supplyhouse.com. And I'll tell you what, it was significantly less expensive to get it online from them and have it shipped to us than it would have been at Home Depot or Lowe's. So, and more and most importantly, we were able to get every single type of fitting that we needed, even odd things like reduction elbows and tees and things like that. We were able to get everything that we needed. We got it here within a couple days and our first order was free shipping. The second one, I think it cost us six bucks for shipping. Still with the shipping, it was less expensive than Home Depot. So just a no brainer and a, a, a shout out to them. Really appreciate them getting this to us because it's going to make it a lot easier. So we have all of our fittings here. <clears throat> We're going to eventually have them separated by size before we get into to all of our fittings here over the next couple days. And then of course, how we're gonna connect them. So we are gonna use uh, a couple different things. First would be a primer. We are gonna go ahead and primer all of the lines. Um, because we are gonna be under pressure, it is suggested that you use a primer before you actually use the glue. So we are gonna use a primer and then we're gonna use Christie's Red Hot Blue glue. I've used that every single time I've done any type of installation for irrigation, and I don't think I've ever had it actually fail. We've had other parts and pieces fail, but not this. <clears throat> so we are gonna be utilizing those for all the gluing. I um, mean, we will be gluing all of the pieces, obviously. So I think that's about it. We've got a few other odds and ends as far as supplies. Now, tomorrow morning, my son and I will actually be going to Home Depot. We're gonna be picking up their biggest trencher, uh, the one that's got the tracks on it. It's a 36 inch trencher. So our plan is to get up nice and early, get there first thing in the morning, get that rented, and come back to the property and start trenching tomorrow morning as early as we possibly can. So now I've got my son with me tomorrow. He's gonna be behind the camera. And again, we're gonna try to get as much as we possibly can for you guys. So that's about it for this episode. Next one up, of course, is gonna be installation and water to the property. Cannot wait. So just wanna thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Questions or comments, leave those in the comment section down below. Instagram and Facebook, we post content there. You won't see here on the YouTube channel. And our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description. That's a free painless way to help support the channel. If you start with that link, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just wanna thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, 